Hello everyone, and as you can hear, the nut job over here is acting like a stupid idiot because it's this dumb freaking idiot right now, so I can't really record it, so that's why I'm using my phone. Anyways, I'm in a goosebumps mood. Let's try this. So thanks to one guy, which I think I can actually pull it up because laptop isn't that stupid, isn't exactly that bad. So thanks to Thomas Harrison to actually get me back on track on doing this. So here we go. I found a bit more stuff. And the good news is that the wiki page helped me out. So for anyone who doesn't want to go to a wiki page or basically saying, ah, oh, dude, it's, it's not really that reliable and stuff. Or you're just basically like, oh, I'd rather just hear someone say something. Here we go. Let's do it. So this is basically somewhat of a retraction. A little bit of it is retraction. Because, well, something happened that I'm like, oh, frick, really? Even though, we'll get to it. Yeah, we'll get to it. This is the last character that I have to talk about. Last monster. Anyways, let's go with the first one. The first one is, because of Thomas Harrison, he's like, the things that are crawling on the wall. So, I guess that's the first retraction. Because I bet I said, stay out of the basement. It was those plants. But, of course, given that didn't really happen i mean the plant monster was a plant monster but it turned into a human so it was a human plant hybrid but you never actually got to see plants actually do that type of thing just yet i mean you did have the whole plants who were like i'm your father no i'm your father no i'm your father yeah i'm i didn't read the book so if that didn't happen in the book well go ahead and take the book and hit me upside the head okay I don't care. <laughs> Anyways, so we got your plant food, and it's from Give Yourselves Goosebumps 13. So the plants that was seen destroying the phone towers, along with being on top of the tower as well, there was another tower that was actually a building. And, yep, Thomas Harrison, I remember that part too. I remember that they were in that scene as well. So it turns out those were evil creeper plants. That's right. You see what they did there? evil <laughs> so a little bit about this is that they've got like three things number one is that the plants actually eat he people it actually eat humans that's one thing to keep it advised another thing is that there is also a virus that was dealing with these plants as well or because of where they went in a field trip there was a virus that actually was noted that actually could do something to you and i forgot what it did i think there was like many things that happened from you got hit by a thorn or you got sprayed by a plant and then the plant turned you into freaking goop. So you got all that crap. And then we got Max Creeper, who is like the collector. If you've seen the collector movie that I hate so damn much, remember the last part where he actually had someone in the suitcase? Yeah, someone in a locked box or whatever you want to call it, the trunk. He did the exact same thing to two kids. Yeah, that's right. He did the exact same thing to two children. <laughs> and then we have a female scientist who is evil as well, because if you get captured by her, she decides to experiment on you, which most likely equals you're dead. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the 13th book. If you want to check that one out, go right ahead. There is lots of things of where you can actually die. <laughs> of course, now we got to talk about the special typewriter. Sadly, this week of page, even though they did go down below and talk about it and said that, yeah, you're correct on the whole, it's from the blob that eats everyone, but we didn't actually put it up top. Yeah, it's like, that's the weird part. It's like, you mentioned a special typewriter, but you don't connect the dots unless you go, unless you're down below, but you didn't go down up top and say, oh, we need to correct what's up top. We need to make sure that the special typewriter is mentioned that it came from the blob that ate everyone. Anyways, that one, book, 50, book 55, and that's from the original series. I believe so, and they did back me up a little bit, but they didn't back me up all the way, sadly. And of course, yes, the blob exists in the freaking movie too. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's like, of course, you have to have two things. It's kind of like Pandora's box. Hope is the special typewriter. But on the other hand, the blob is all the horrible crap that came from the Pandora's box as well. All the bad stuff. 
Anyways, number three is Invasion of the Body Squeezers. And this is a part one, part two series. This does not actually have a number. I tried looking. There is no number associated with this book at all. All I can tell you is from Goosebumps 2000. That's all I can tell you. I don't know what number it's from. Anyway, it's a two-parter. It's a book one and book two, or part one and part two. If I have to guess, even though I bet I'm wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. I think part two is the one where we actually get the ice, the aliens with the ice guns. I think so. But I could most likely be wrong. But just to make sure, I think that's where they came from. Hopefully, this is finally putting an end to where the hell did they come from. But on the other hand, it's like, I don't have any evidence to truly prove that. Of course, number four is Attack of the Graveyard Ghouls. Special thanks to Thomas Harrison again. So, the Graveyard Ghouls, there's like a lot of stuff to talk about. It's apparently, there's a good guy and there's a bad guy. The bad guy goes and possesses people because well he's dead and yeah he decides to go to possess people and make people burn houses down and break stuff while the other one tried to actually tell him hey we shouldn't be doing this we should try to go back to our own bodies or heck we should decide to go to oh but instead yeah he did all that crap anyways the graveyard ghouls does not have that story with them only thing they have is just the fact of they're just basically minions and they're also featured in another video game as basic minions. Anyways, they're from book Goosebumps 2000, book 11. That's all I need to tell you about those guys. And of course, this is a retraction too, because I was like, oh, 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 this is from Welcome to the Dead House because they had the zombies in it. No, 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 they got another one with dead ha with freaking zombies in it. Well, technically they're ghouls, but yeah, thanks. Thanks for making more than one book with zombies. Given it would make more sense if there was a house right there and there was a graveyard. Now that makes sense, but hey, okay, fine, whatever. I thought you would just go your own way about it, but okay. Of course, another one that I was like, this is this is not really retraction. This is just making sure I get a like a pat on the back and also a smack in the back of the head. So the invisible boy. You had two options. One, he's from Let's Get Invisible. Or two, he's from My Best Friend Is Invisible. And it turns out that My Best Friend Invisible is the correct one. And it is from the original Goosebumps book series 57. Yeah, this is the one with the cat scared out of his freaking damn mind because of pizza's levitating. <laughs> I don't know. I think the newest book might be different. The newest art on the book might be different, but in the old school, that's exactly what he did. Anyways, his name is Brett Green. An interesting fact is that all the monsters that do have names to them, he actually will call out their names. That's one interesting part. He'll actually call out their names. All right, next up is the freaking bees yeah it turns out those aren't flies those aren't bugs those are actually bees and guess what book it came from if you said why i'm afraid of bees you are freaking damn correct even though this is another one where i'm like um that was not really the bad guy it's like yeah the bees aren't really the bad guy in this one the real bad guy is the woman, I think is the woman, the woman scientist who actually created the freaking swamping device. I know it's not called that, but I'm just going to nickname it, which you're able to switch yourself with someone else. They both are able to switch with someone else and you're able to live their lives. But because of a bee showing up out of nowhere, the bee intercepted our main character and now he is basically in a bee's body. Yeah, and the only way how to return back to his own body is if the other person actually does something who is in his body. So, I don't know. Really, in this book, no one's really the bad guy here. I mean, the only bad guy is the lady who actually sells a product to little children, with young children, without the whole 
You have to be 18 or older to order. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's always in every single freaking damn thing I ever see, is you have to be 18 or older to order. <laughs> I'm like, freak, man. Freak. <laughs> Well, anyways, besides that one, and sadly, yeah, Teacher's Pet is out of the book on that one. But anyways, we got Enter the Mummy. Yeah, we got Prince Koru and also Nala Raman. Raman, I guess that's how to say it. But anyways, yeah, we got those two. I think what happened is she... Hmm, that's a good question on that one. I don't know if she actually gets that ring the controls that she actually controls her brother and that's prince koru who actually is the mummy i have no idea if she actually pulls the strings on this or he has his own mind either way technically the mummy is not the bad guy it's freaking nala who actually nila who actually is the bad guy here because nila is the one who actually woke him up and he's like let me freaking damn sleep let me sleep woman Holy frick. Okay. I'm going to talk about this in one second. But still, yeah, she was technically the bad guy in this one because the mummy just wanted to freaking damn sleep. So, one thing you need to know about now, Nila right here, is Nila can actually turn into a scarab. Why in the movie she didn't use that to her advantage, I may never know. <laughs> that would be cool. They locked the freaking door and they're like, hey, look, a scarab. Oh! That would be freaking funny as hell. It's like, oh, sh they got a freaking ant man of their own. Oh, holy sh <laughs> That would be funny. That would have been funny as freak. Yeah, it's like, there's nowhere to hide. And she just kicks down the door, kicks down the stuff that was blocking the door. And now the monsters are able to free to terrorize even more. It's like, yeah, and then when she does it again, she gets stomped on. Now she's dead. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, this is the one that I knew something about because I actually watched a featurette. So it turns out the hieroglyphics that is on her eyebrows or that actually is in place of her eyebrows actually spells goosebumps. And what's even worse is that on the wiki page, they have no idea how to say or spell hieroglyphics. <laughs> yeah, because they were like H Y R O G. No, no, no. Hieroglyphics is H I E R A, then the rest of it. And technically, that I should actually be a Y. So, yeah, um, whoever did that, you spelled hieroglyphics wrong. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Next is Madam Doom. And Madam Doom actually. Yeah, so this is an interesting thing about Madame Doom. So it turns out Madame Doom is known as Clarissa the Crystal Woman. And Clarissa the Crystal Woman actually got killed because a bastard who's like, you're going to die. You're going to die very, very soon. And he decides to push her off a cliff. <laughs> then she actually decides to possess one of the fortune teller machines that he bought and the fortune teller machine actually told him the same thing that clarissa told him and well he got pissed off and bought more and more and more and eventually he actually had a heart attack and died so she was telling him the truth <laughs> and it looks like clarissa the crystal woman aka madam doom could actually be the same woman from be careful what you wish for ding 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 Amazing, isn't it? And of course, she made her first debut from Revenge of the Living Dummy. And I think that's Goosebumps Horrorland number one. I think that is it. And she's actually credited as Monster 21 in the movie. Now, another crazy thing that you guys are going to say, what, John? What? What? is this, is that Clarissa the Crystal Woman was in the movie as well. So Madame Doom and Clara the Crystal Woman were both in the same movie and they were played by different people, which I do now have to admit is makes sense because it's like, it does make sense because why would the dude that got a fortune that sucks actually buy a 
fortune teller machine with a woman, the M- animatronic woman, actually looking like the same woman that told him he's gonna die. That sounds creepy as freak, number one. And number two is like, that sounds pretty stupid. You would figure he'll buy one that actually doesn't look like her at all. So it makes sense why she actually won't actually look like Clarissa, the crystal woman. Yeah, it's like a before and after. Before, she's able to get killed. And, oh yeah, Clarissa, the white woman, actually is classified as the witch. Meanwhile, Madame Doom most likely is able to survive. Yeah. It's kind of like in the Simpsons episode of the love testing grandpa. The fact that Abe Simpson died, tried to go to heaven, the freaking airplane hit him. He went back down to earth and he now is living in a love testing machine. And love testing machine actually got beaten the freak up, but yet he's still alive. (laughs) So it's like, yeah, she can get this. That thing can get destroyed, but she's still alive. It'll still most likely be her. It's just that she will be not functional. Oh, yeah, and Madame Doom's in lots of other books, too, when it comes to Goosebumps Horrorland. But, man, that's a good one to talk about is Clarissa the Crystal Woman. That's going to be a good one to talk about very, very soon. Anyways, let's conclude this with the last one that makes me say I have to retract. So we got this Swamp Monster slash the Bog Monster. And it's from, no, it's not from You Can't Scare Me. It's not from that book. It turns out it's from How to Kill a Monster, book 46 from the original series. Now, for you out there who are like, what? But in the freaking TV show, and I'm like, yeah, in the TV show, he looked pretty different. And for some who actually bought the activity book, and or the movie novelization, I think that was it, it turns out that they even had no freaking idea what they were doing because they were convinced too that I was correct as well, that it's not the freaking how to kill your how to kill a monster one. It's actually the one from You Can't Scare Me, the freaking swamp person, the swamp people. But instead, no, it turns out that they weren't reading the book. (laughs) They weren't reading the book at all. So, yeah. Yeah, this is like one good example of showing that the people who made this movie did not actually read the book, How to Kill a Monster. And they didn't even look at the freaking original printing of the cover, because the cover, as you can see, it has paws. Instead, they went for a total bog monster. Me, personally, it's like, yeah, you guys need to just not say anything and say, yes, it is the monster from You Can't Square, You Can't Scare Me. It is the freaking swamp monster. It's like, they should just say that. They shouldn't say, no, 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 no. It's from How to Kill a Monster. It's like, no. But then why is his mouth not the same? Because his mouth's supposed to be alligator-like, apparently. Not only that, but he's supposed to have green fur, not this green mush that's over him. On the other hand, you could go to the excuse of, but he lives in the swamp, though. That means that he can be covered with bog all over he wants. He could be covered with seaweed and stuff like that. And like, sure, we can go with that example. But seriously, I would prefer you guys would just say either A, cover it up and say it was You Can't Scare Me, Monster. Or B, say you did a bad job and we didn't read the book. It's like, you might as well just say it was the freaking swamp monster from You Can't Scare Me. Anyways, there you go. Hopefully you guys understand what exactly happened. But anyways, that is all I got to say to you on that. Anyways, thank you for watching. And if you have anything to say or you have like any monster that you would like to point out and say, oh, they meant they had this monster in there, but they didn't actually know what it was or lots of people don't know what it was, but I do comment down below. Definitely. I like to hear what you have to say and you will be featured just like Thomas here. But anyways, thank you for watching and have a great day.